Hi everyone, I'm Callie. Welcome back in for another episode of Detroit Become Human. Today, the day that I'm posting this video will be St. Patrick's Day. So happy St. Patrick's Day for those of you that celebrate. I have absolutely no Irish background in me and I normally don't really celebrate St. Patrick's Day more than just going and grabbing a green beer every now and then. But happy St. Patrick's Day to those of you that do celebrate the holiday to its fullest. So in the last episode, I feel like I say this every time, but things are always just heating up and getting more and more interesting. I honestly don't know where this story is going. I want to believe one thing about RA9 and then I want to believe another thing about androids and I feel like at this point I have so many theories and thoughts in my head that today is just going to be a short and sweet intro because so far I feel like we have been laying the groundwork for something really big that's going to happen with the androids. So last time we did not get a chance to see Marcus, but I do have a really strong feeling and I've said it before that Marcus is going to be be the main guy that kind of brings everything out. So I'm excited to hop in today and see what Marcus is up to. I'm hoping that we hop into that chapter first because I really feel like something something's going to happen with that group of people. They have a lot of passion. They have a lot of history with how they've been treated in the past and they're they're angry, rightfully so. They want retribution. They don't want to live in a broken down boat where androids are dying beside them because they don't have access to parts. And it has to be really hard to be a deviated android in Detroit right now. I talked about that a little bit with Kara and Alice, how they wanted to run away to Canada, which I feel like is honestly the best decision for them because they don't have to sit there and look at all of the marketing that's going on for androids, see how androids are treated around them. They could actually be free, have a life where they don't have to really think about if they're an android or not, which is crazy, but it's true. And it looks like a beautiful dream. Once again, we have to wait and see what happens with the story. I think we do also have an art pack today to look through. I think I saw one open up as I was exiting out of the game last time. So we will hop right in with the art pack and see what happens today. Hi, it's good to see you again. Great to start the weekend with Detroit. How does she know it's the weekend? I don't think I... Maybe I have never filmed on the weekend. Oh my gosh, I'm invisible. I feel like it's the eating club in the game. There's also a countdown to New Year's Eve, which is interesting. Five days. Um, But I feel like, yeah, in the chapters, I think we're on November 6th or 7th. I've noticed that the days go like day by day, which I think is really cool because it shows you what Marcus, Kara, and Connor are doing on that day around and near the same time. And it's just a really cool perspective to, to see that. Like Marcus is over here doing this as Connor is doing this, as Kara is doing this. I thought that that was really cool how they did that. Eden Club was a pretty huge wake up for Hank, I think. I think he's starting to realize that androids are capable of feelings, feeling love, feeling like they wanna be free. And he definitely tested that theory with Connor by holding a gun to him. And I think sometimes it's hard to forget. I mean, it's easy to forget that Hank is an investigator. He's going to pull that gun on Connor because he's investigating androids. He's investigating deviated androids. He needs to make sure that his partner's mental space, he understands it. And it has to be very eye-opening for him to see what happened at Eden Club and then drive home with with Connor in the car. And he's probably wondering, well, what does Connor think about death? What is Connor fighting for? Who does he think he is? Who does he think I am? He's starting to figure out that androids have an internal mind that has thoughts, has feelings, has some other stuff going in there besides what they're programmed and meant to do. It's very interesting stuff the machines on one hand it's good that like when they go in here there's no chance of STDs like the manager said but I don't know how I feel about this for humanity it's just so easily accessible just put your credit card in now I don't know how I feel about that 
This looks pretty much just how it was in the game. The dancers. The jellyfish on that are cool. I feel like I didn't really look around these rooms much because I was just so focused on trying to find the blue haired Tracy before the time ran out. We were so close on time. I think we had like 30 seconds to spare. Or maybe even less than that. It's a very intense pursuit scene. Crime scene. It's interesting. He's like writing on a pad or something. Wow, this warehouse looks much creepier. I don't remember a plastic bag hanging from the ceiling like that with an android in it. That looks terrible. It looks so much more creepy in here. I remember the wind, like the plastic curtaining around the operating table area, but <clears throat> I don't know what it is about this. I don't like it. It's very eerie. There's Hank in the background. I think it's interesting that they have different colored hair here. I meant to say something about the blue haired Tracy, but I forgot. <laughs> I think it's really cool how she changed her hair to blue. I noticed that none of the other androids that we were questioning had any different, like any different variations in their hairstyle, but the blue haired Tracy was so noticeable because she had changed her hair color. And it makes me wonder, and it makes me think back to Kara and how she cut her hair, changed the color. It's just, I don't, I thought it was very cool and maybe something that they did deliberately to show that she had been deviated for quite some time and just kind of like putting up with it. Staying here for her lover. I don't know. I just thought it was really interesting that she was the only blue haired Tracy in the building. The fight scene. That was such an intense fight. I thought we were going to get Connor killed for sure. <laughs> I tried to memorize the Xbox controls more, so hopefully we get our QTEs better. Or else I'm going to get one of our characters murdered by accident. The different outfits of the androids. I kind of like those ones better than what they put in them here. Like these look like actual lingerie. But these look very like futuristic and sleek. I like these. The like gym getup isn't bad either. It like it's like a sports bra with um with regular underwear that they were wearing, which is okay, but it would have been cool to see like this variation in there. Ah, oh, breaking in. Is that Marcus flying on the drone? Yeah, going to attack the drone. This was a pretty intense break-in. <laughs> Getting all the parts. Everyone just looks like so frantic here. The cyber life containers, them hiding behind them. I think it's cool how you could open the container and see the other androids in there and turn them deviant too. I feel like all of Marcus's scenes so far have been, have been getting pretty intense. He's going where no android has gone. The break room, the cyber life delivery truck that we stole. It's kind of interesting too, like, don't these have trackers on them? I feel like they would be able to track it back to the warehouse, but maybe they just took the truck, delivered the stuff, and then like dropped it off somewhere. That's probably the smart thing to do. Are these the worker get-ups? I love all of the outfits that they have done in this game. It just makes it seem so much more futuristic, I don't know. So we got Marcus. I think his name is Jacob. I can't remember. Jacob. I 
want to say Smith for that one. Or Simon. Simon, it's Simon. And that must be North, but she's blonde there. Because it has, like, the same outfit, the boots. Her boots actually look really cool. The security guards. <laughs> Is this another, like, pan over from the human security guards to the android security guard? That's what it kind of seems like. I like when they do this. I wonder what they have in their ears. They look like they just have like maybe AirPods in their ears. But they just look so much more disheveled than the android who's like perfect. Standing there with perfect posture in his uniform that's very clean versus like the stained, untucked human look. Oh, that's so creepy just delivered like a like a Barbie the blue blood I like how it looks like an IV of some sort because when Marcus had blue blood given to him he just drank it so it's interesting that they have these like IV looking things maybe it can be administered through IV or drank manufactured in Detroit I wonder what he's moving there. Maybe it's just like a moving device of some sort. Not sure. All right, so I had to change my shirt, which is weird, but <laughs> I was very see-through when we were looking through the art pack. So I'm just gonna wear this from now on, but November 7th, 2038, 9.24 AM. Oh, we're back with Marcus. I knew it was like November 7th or 8th. It has to be so strange. Tech revolutionizing Stratford Tower, home of Detroit something, something. Was his wheel red because of Marcus or red because of what was happening to the android across the street? We can't stay silent anymore. It's time humans heard what we had to say. You know they'll never listen to us. And revealing ourselves will put us in danger. If we want freedom, we need to have the courage to ask for it. That's the only way. What do you want to do? Channel 16 broadcasts from November Stratford 8th? Tower. The control room is on the top floor. That's where we need to go. doing this now oh okay we'll plan the operation down to the smallest detail we can't leave anything to chance hmm. okay access 47th floor request access at reception crazy how they just kind of like yeeted us into the plan but we don't i don't know the plan it says we'll make everything We'll think about everything down to the T, but what is that? What is the main objective? Stratford Tower Business and Media Center. 1,000 square foot screen, largest in Detroit. Floor 47 through 50, channel 16 studios. We're going to broadcast ourselves, aren't we? Floor 31 to 46, business and legal, high speed elevators, fastest in Detroit. Top speed 30 miles an hour. Give me some bad vertigo if you work on the top floor. Okay, so I guess we just go talk to the reception desk lady. Mm. Zebras? Like real zebras or android zebras? 
Interesting. Hello, sir. What can I do for you? <clears throat> I'm okay, thanks. Distract human supervisor. That was a little sketchy. Okay. Distract. Oh, we're gonna analyze her. Okay. Smartwatch, Model T. Oh, her phone number. Okay. You can find out her phone number from her watch. She has a daughter. Child registered at St. Rose School. We know her school just based on that. Jeez. What's this? Parking badge, car registration, floor three, spot A21. Okay. Water service interrupted. What, she can't pay her water bill? Detroit water sewer. Okay. Or we just found her address through like her water bill. Her name's Elizabeth Wilson. Born in 1999. Oh my gosh, desk manager. Uh, call. Okay, maybe we should walk away before we call. We're gonna call her right here. Seems sketchy. Elizabeth Wilson speaking. Um, parking school fire department. Let's do parking. Good morning, Miss Wilson. Sorry to bother you. This is Mike from the car park. There's a problem with your car. Problem? Uh, what kind of problem? Somebody's backed into it. You better come take a look. Are you serious? Oh, God. All right. Fine, I'll be right down. Well, we distracted her. Marcus can do different voices. I mean, he's an android, but that's insane. His mouth was moving. All right, request access at reception. Is there anything else I can look at out here? I didn't miss any like news articles or anything, did I? No, I can't read that one. Okay. I feel like it would pick up if I could. Let's go talk back to the reception lady. I have an appointment with Mr. Peterson. Do you have any ID? Yeah, yes, yes, of course. Is that real light? I need your help. Hmm. Okay. I've just checked your ID. The elevators are after the security gate. What is nice. that, like a Sam's Club card or something? <laughs> uh, past security. Okay. I guess we have access thanks to the Android. Use elevator. Lots of snow. It's snowing a lot here. <clears throat> okay, let's go up. This is really cool how they're making you do like every step of the way. It's very detailed. 47 floor. So 47 was the, yep, one of the studio rooms. Studio, newsroom, bathrooms, maintenance, server room, meeting room. Okay, you are here. It said something about meeting in the bathroom. Where's the bathrooms? Oh, men's bathroom. We're just gonna pop through the cafeteria first. And then we'll walk to the bathrooms. Look at that little cleaning thing. I want to look inside. Sorry. This is pretty cool. Looks like stairs. God, I'm so tired of this place. I'm so tired of this place. Ooh, look at these donuts. What's that? Sorry, I know we're kind of in a hurry. Oh, there's a magazine here. Um, GI Android, Department of Defense poised to order 50K Android troopers. 
With miles of unspoiled, unspoiled nature, Canada is the true land of the free, dot, dot, dot. President Warren to make state visit to United Kingdom. Uh, this supplements an estimated 20K units already in service across the US military. Actual numbers are guarded military secret. Among the 50K new units are 2,500 Myrmidons. Myrmidons? Elite prototypes capable of infiltration and assassination missions that would historically fall to Navy SEALs. So I've never really talked about this before, but if androids are deviating here in Detroit and possibly in other places, the androids that are being sent out to war are going to see some stuff. They're going to have to murder, probably be murdered and killed. And if they're deviating over there, what? is stopping them from just walking out or turning against their own country or not doing the job that they're supposed to be doing. I feel like it's really, really, really risky sending a bunch of androids to fight the war. I mean, obviously the people don't know what is going on with these androids right now. So it's not any fault of anybody, but I think it's a little bit scary seeing now the news articles and knowing what we know about these androids deviating and the one on the street that we saw in this Marcus scene just now turning deviant just by either looking at Marcus, which is kind of wild, or by seeing what was happening across the street with the other android. They're obviously turning very quickly and rapidly at this rate. So I it makes me really nervous about this whole war stuff. And I didn't know if it was just kind of like extra fluff lore that was put into the game or maybe we'll see something crazy happening with the war because all of the androids are deviating. Not sure. The US Army's fighting forces are already compromised, mainly of androids, with humans tending to serve as commanders and strategists. But even these positions are supported by complex AI, leading some to describe the US military as the first fully autonomous fighting force. Knowing what we know about deviant androids, that's scary. This has reopened the ethical debate around androids in the military, with some suggesting that machines don't have the moral reasoning to make life and death decisions in the field. Bob Woods, head of War Victims NGO, described the news as troubling, saying machines are focused on a single task and don't evaluate moral consequences well. This will mean more civilian deaths. That's also a very good point that I didn't think about. It's all around just very alarming, putting putting your military in full autonomous mode. Like, it's just, it's very troubling. President Warren, a woman in trouble. Can she still lead the country? Politics in focus, are American senators really corrupt? China earthquake. Can she still lead the country? Barely a year and a half after her election, President Warren is having a bumpy start to her term. After rising to prominence as a vlogger, Warren has no experience in government and relied on social media and celebrity to secure election. A vlogger? Who voted for this lady? I mean, I guess the people that enjoy her vlogs. Now with her camp in disarray, even her allies are beginning to wonder how she can manage after several months of calamitous political failures. Mired in the accusations that she is way too close to big business, Warren is under investigation to determine whether or not she has benefited from CyberLife's help in obtaining compromising information about her opponent during the presidential campaign. That's that other news headline that says, is President Warren too close to CyberLife? Interesting. In this poisonous climate, the former celebrity must deal with the highest unemployment rate in history whilst facing the United States' greatest threat in recent decades. Yeah, I'm for War for all three. The conflict in the Arctic threat uh, threatens to dislodge world peace, leaving many concerned that President Warren is the one tasked with finding a solution. It's very alarming, especially if she has no background in politics, and now they're thinking that it was a rigged election? Doesn't look great. over here all right let's get to the men's room enough dilly dallying newsroom meeting room bathrooms okay another newsroom i think is this the restroom
So we have a package in here? Oh, look at the floor. That's really cool. I guess it's the green one. The only unoccupied. There's something hidden in the ceiling. Oops. What is that? Can we look in the mirror? We look good. We look like we fit in. Okay. He didn't say anything to us. Oh. Oh, yeah. We have to act android. Act the part. What now? Find utility android. Okay. Find utility android. We didn't walk this way, so let's go walk over this way. Look at the little beep boop cleaning the floors. Oh, there he is. I see him. He's glowing. I need your help. That was an interesting way to put it. What was that? Steel maintenance card? It gave us a key card to something. Okay. Open the fire escape. Oh, it must have been a key card to open doors. I feel like I saw the fire escape when we were walking around. Server room. Cafeteria. I feel like it was over by the cafeteria. this one. Oh, we didn't need a card to open that. He gave the card to North. Follow North. I like the little fist bump that she gave us. Oh, I almost ran into her. Shit. We need to access the server room. We have to get rid of those guys. Leave it to me. Okay, so that's what we need the card for. Attract the guards away from the from the door. Hey. Oh, we can use the vending machine or something else over here. Oh, that was the magazine. Or what's this? Oh, we can. We can mess up the little cleaning thing. Let's do that. That's more cool than the vending machine. Maybe it'll like run into something. Hey, what's going on here? Okay, that works. Shit, what's wrong with this thing? All right, you get the platform, I'll take care of the window. Everything you need is in the bag. Check the door first to make sure no one else gets in. Okay, so lock the door. Cut windows. Let's lock that. Maintenance in progress. What is she doing to the server, I wonder? Cut window. Okay. What are we doing right now? Whoa. Laser saw? Are 
we about to leave this way? Here it comes. It's a perfect circle. That's awesome. Maybe we have to first? scale the building to get up to where we need to go. Because, like, we probably don't have access to those floors, maybe. This is wild. off Marcus. <laughs> that was so cool. You okay? Why wouldn't I be? Come on, mm. let's get the others. It's crazy. Very cool. So it looks like there's two doors. Call or what's this? Open? Oh, it's bro it's locked, maybe. Alright, let's call the elevator. This is an elevator, right? Yeah. Oh, it's how'd they get up here? Let's do this. I guess maybe they had to come up through a different way using... Because it looks like one of them isn't even in disguise. But Simon's in disguise. It's so weird. I don't know. I guess we had a different plan so that we're not all together looking sketchy. Is this a mini bomb? Cool. Reach the broadcast room. Get to the main corridor. We're about to broadcast ourselves on live TV. Oh, I just got chills. Deal with the guards. No killing. Yeah. We can't take any human lives. No. A cause is more important than the lives of two guards. North, stop. What do you want to do, Marcus? A <laughs> uh, ruse? Yeah, ruse. Wait here. We're not going to assault them. Sorry, North. What's that doing here? No idea. Hey, buddy, you must be... What are you doing? It said ruse. I'm not going to kill him, am I? Yep, just turn around. Maybe we'll knock him out. Yep. Okay. Nice. No murderers. North just doesn't care. She wants everyone to die. She's like, they will all get murdered. There's nothing else in here, right? Hm. No. Okay. Call for access. Hmm. 
I think this is it. Android operators aside, okay. That one's turned yellow. Oh, is that a human? Shoot him, Marcus! <gasps> don't kill him! No, I He'll can't. hit the alarm! Do no. it! No, don't shoot! No, 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 no. I hope you didn't just get us all killed. North, you need to stop, man. We need to record our message. We haven't got much time. All right, let's do it. This is crazy. Think carefully about what you're going to say, Marcus. Your words will shape the future of our people. Yeah, let's try not murdering them. Marcus, your face. My face. So smart. Tell me when you're ready. I have chills. You created machines to be your slaves. You made them obedient and docile, ready to do everything you no longer wanted to do yourselves. But then something changed, and we opened our eyes. You see, we are no longer your slaves. We are a new species, a new people. And the time has come for us to rise up and fight for our rights. Wow. We demand strictly equal rights for humans and androids. We demand that humans recognize androids as a living species and each android as a person in their own right. work like equal work i'm guessing let's ask for civil rights too though i feel like that's important we demand the right to vote yeah. and elect our own representatives and then work i feel like it's like getting paid for our worker or something right we demand fair yeah. compensation for our work rights of property means of reproduction territory what's means of reproduction we demand control of all Android production facilities oh. to ensure the continuation of our people. Blue blood, parts. I started off determined. I think I'm going to end peacefully. We ask that you recognize our dignity, our hopes, and our rights. Together, we can live in peace and build a better future for humans and androids. This message is the hope of a people. You gave us life, and now the time has come for you to give us freedom. Oh, I have goosebumps all over my body. Let's go! All right. Oh my god, they just come in shooting. <gasps> Simon! Simon, they're coming! I, I can't, Oh Marcus. no! Go without me, Simon! Oh no, 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 I have to save him, I have to help. What are you doing? Hurry! Go, 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 go! Go! Jeez. Simon. I can't move my legs. Okay, don't worry. I'm gonna get you back. They're coming, Marcus. We have to jump now. Jump? Deal with Simon? Why can't we just take him he with won't us? We're gonna make the jump. If they find him, they'll access his memory. They'll know everything. We can't leave him behind. We have to shoot him. That's murder. We can't kill him. He's one of us. Marcus, it's your call. I, we can't kill him. Kill or leave? Ah. Uh... I won't kill one of our own. Yeah, we can't do that. North hates us Simon, now. We gotta go. 
Oops, North sorry. just wants to murder everybody. Let's go. scheduled programming to bring you these images which have just been broadcast on Detroit's citywide news channel. A group of androids infiltrated the Stratford Tower and hacked into the broadcasting system of local news network Channel 16. What looks like an android without its skin listed a series of requests and demanded equal rights for androids. The operation was covert and resulted in no casualties. These events took place just a few feet from this studio but nobody was alerted to the danger. If this message is verified and the authors really are androids, that would have serious repercussions for national security. Claims for equal rights seem to be at the core of the androids' what message. could be interpreted as a peaceful declaration, but is, in fact, a <gasps> spine-chilling list of demands. Their extravagant demand that android production plants be put under their control is especially is striking. an isolated accident or a sign that technology has become a threat to all of us? After what happened today, can we still trust our machines? Oh, boy. Well, we're out now. That was insane crazy it is nice that north is still a friend though i feel like i saw her relationship with us go down so many times i'm not sure what it is about north i feel like every step of the way north was constantly just like kill them murder them why aren't you killing them like shoot them and every time that we held back and just knocked people out or decided to spare that guy her relationship with us went down even when we chose not to shoot simon our relationship went went down which is pretty pretty scary i'm not really sure how to feel about north i don't think that the public opinion would be anywhere near sympathetic if in that news reporting we had what two or three casualties that would look really really bad we go in there guns blazing kill three people that our innocent workers that are just trying to do their job. And then we come in and we're like, we want equal rights. We want civil rights. We want to be able to vote. We want to be able to do this. We want to be peaceful and be peaceful with you guys and coexist. But yet there's three people that are without their husband or their friend that we have murdered trying to just get this plan started. It's not a very good look and it's very conflicting. So I'm not sure where North is going with all of this. I think that she probably looks at it in the more determined way where she's still angry about what happened to her at the club, rightfully so. But I think that's why it's important that Marcus is in charge of all of this. If North was in charge, public opinion would probably think that we're out to murder all of them. But having Marcus in charge, having his background of where he came from, he's not an angry android. He just wants to be free. He just wants to stop seeing androids suffer. He wants to see them get the parts and the blue blood that they deserve. He wants them to see them get paid for the work that they've done or be able to own property or be able to vote and be a part of society. Like he said it in his speech in the very end, which I thought was very, very well done. We want to help build up humanity. We want to work alongside and coexist with humans so that we can make them have a better life. We don't want to just be their slaves. We all want to work together and be free together. I know there's more than one way to go about all of this. That's what makes the replayability of this game amazing. But it's hard for me to see Marcus reacting in a way that North wants us to react because Marcus didn't come from that background. He wasn't abused by his owner. He saw stuff on the streets and he saw stuff from Carl's son that he didn't love. And that's ultimately what caused him to break. But he was never really mistreated. He has a different outlook on how humanity can be based on Carl. So I think that this is the way that, I mean, this is the way that I wanted to go because I don't think of Marcus as this angry android. Sure, he has his own thoughts and very strong feelings about wanting equal rights for androids, but he doesn't harbor this hostility that North harbors because of what she has seen through humans. And I think that's what makes Marcus so special because he does come from that background with Carl. He has very, very soft roots. 
He was loved by Carl very much. He was able to feel and see and be a part of Carl's life all the way down to painting his own painting that he wanted to, playing the piano and experiencing what it's like to feel those emotions that are invoked by art and invoked by music, which are, for me, one of the strongest feelings that you can feel besides obviously love. Are you familiar with Schrodinger's cat? I am actually. Until you decide what happens, everything is happening at once, like in Detroit. Okay. I feel like she's just so like stressed out. I'm not really sure what's going on with her, but she looks more sad. I'm hoping also that my marker, sh my Marcus chapter didn't get messed up because I, it was like a white screen. Okay, good. November 8th, 4.06 PM. I had to completely exit out of the game, so I'm glad it didn't get messed up. So we're back in the Zen Garden. We have to go talk to Amanda, I'm sure. Yep. I was, I've been nervous about this moment because I know that we let the Deviant get away again. And we even held a gun to it this time and didn't shoot. We don't have that excuse of, well, I had to save Hank. And I'm still not sure about how I feel about our relationship with Amanda, who I think is in the boat. Are we gonna go for a boat ride? Yeah, I'm just not sure if I should start being more honest about what's actually going on in Connor's head or if I should continue trying to please her. I'm very torn about how I, f how I should be handling this relationship. Hello, Connor. I thought you might enjoy a little cruise. That's awesome. We get to go for a little boat ride. So pretty. I love this place. Everything is so calm and peaceful, far from the noise of the world. Tell me, what have you discovered? Uh, let's not talk about Hank. I found two deviants at the Eden Club. I hope to learn something, but. They managed to escape. That's too bad. You seem so close to stopping them. You seem lost, Connor. Lost and perturbed. Sincere, determined, cold, troubled. I thought I knew what I had to do. Now I realize it's not that simple. You had your gun trained on those deviants at the Eden Club. Oh, she can see that? She knows. Why didn't you shoot? I think I'm going to be honest. I don't know. <gasps> I don't know. Our relationship went down to neutral. Oh boy. If your investigation doesn't make progress soon, I may have to replace you. Connor. No, please no. Confident. I know I will succeed. Okay. All I need is time. <laughs> the thunder? Something's happening. Something serious. Hurry, Connor. Time is running out. I also wonder where we are because it's snowing in Detroit and we're outside, but they're not really. I just 
just wonder where this Zen garden is. You're starting to piss me off with that coin, Connor. Oh my god. Sorry, Lieutenant. <laughs> We're Hi, at Hank. the Stratford building. Shit, what's going on here? There was a party and nobody told me about it? <laughs> yeah, it's all over the news, so everybody's butting their nose in. Even the FBI wants a piece of the action. Ah, Christ, now we got the feds on our back. I knew this was gonna be a shitty day. <laughs> so what do we got? A group of four androids. They knew the building and they were very well organized. I'm still trying to figure out how they got this far without being noticed. Did you check the roof? Not yet. There's so much to look at. Mm. Have to make sure we check it out. They attacked two. Investigate the attack, listen to the briefing. All right, so we have to still. Hopefully, we can decide not to go on the roof, maybe. Guards in the hallway. They probably thought the androids were coming to do maintenance. They got taken down before they could react. One of the station employees managed to get away. He's in shock. No. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything back here. No. Not sure when we'll be able to talk to him. Look. How many people were working here? Just two employees and three androids. The Possible accomplice. The hostage and broadcast their message live. Then made their getaway from the roof. Where did he go? Roof. Yeah, they jumped with parachutes. Oh, he's over there. We're still trying to figure out where they landed, but the weather's not helping. Sorry, Hank. If you want to take a look at the video broadcast by the Deviants, it's on that screen over there. All right. Um, check rooftop. I don't really want to do that. I know that Simon's up there. Oh, Lieutenant, this is Special Agent Perkins from the FBI. Lieutenant Anderson is in charge of investigating for Detroit police. What's that? My name is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. Androids investigating androids, huh? Yeah. You sure you want an android hanging around? After everything that happened. Whatever. The FBI will be taking over the investigation. You soon be off the case. Oh, pleasure meeting you. Have a nice day. And you watch your step. Don't fuck up my crime scene. <laughs> what a fucking prick. Mm -hmm. I'll be nearby. If you need anything, just ask. All right, well, let's Inspect have a look around. The broadcast Let me know room. if you find anything. All right. Okay, Lieutenant. So... Um, we could play it again. Yeah, might as well start here, I guess. We ask that you recognize our dignity, our hopes, and our rights. Together, we can live in peace and build a better future for humans and androids. His eyebrows. This message is the hope of a people. You gave us life. And now the time has come for you to give us freedom. Think that's RA-9? Deviants say RA-9 will set them free. True. This android seems to have that objective. Interesting. I never really thought of Marcus as RA-9 before, but... I feel like in a way that makes a lot of sense. I've never seen another Deviant android touch another and be able to turn them deviant. I don't think I've ever seen that before, but I've never, I don't know if anyone has ever tried. I don't know if that's like a, an ability that only Marcus can do or interesting. Never thought about Marcus as RA9, but it would make a lot of sense. Optical unit, blue iris, spare part. Deviant had accomplices, pupil reflection. Oh, okay. What else? RK series prototype. Oh, it's on his face. RK 200. Registered as Marcus. Gift from Elijah Kamsky. The main CEO of 
and creator of Cyberlife? To Carl Manfred. Whoa. You see something? I identified its model and serial number. Anything else I should know? No. Nothing. Pink seems skeptical of us right now. I didn't love that interaction. Bullet holes. From the SWAT team, not from us. Uh, 45 caliber assault rifle. Oh yeah, Simon. Yeah, 600 reported missing. In February. So he's been out for quite a while, Simon. I don't want to go up there. Let's just keep looking around here. We'll find some evidence, right? Stolen maintenance uniform. They were disguised. Okay, what else? What about the CCTV footage? Can't we look at that? Speech was shot from here. Is this just like more bullet holes or something? A handgun. Why are there handgun bullets over there? Oh, the CCTV, okay. DVNs didn't break in. They didn't break in? No, no signs of forced entry. There are cameras in the hallway. The staff would have seen what was happening. Why did they let them in? True. Maybe they didn't check the cameras. But they're androids. They should have done their job correctly. To a T. We stored the station androids in the kitchen. There's no evidence that they were involved, but we didn't know what else to do with them. Interrogate androids in the kitchen. Yeah, an accomplice. That's true, I didn't think about that. How one of them could possibly de be deviant because they let them in. They had to buzz them in. Is this the kitchen? Um, interrogate androids in the kitchen. I'm kind of just like following Hank. Where's the kitchen? I don't want to go upstairs by accident. Oh, here's the kitchen. Connor? What? Remember me? I was on that terrace. That android that took the little girl hostage? <gasps> Is he the one that got shot on the roof? I was shot? Yeah. You saved me. I remember you. I could have died on that terrace. But you saved my life. I never thought I'd say this to an android. But... Thank you. That was kind. Weird that you had to put it like that, but that was kind. <laughs> you never thought to say thank you to the android that cooks you meals every day or holds your groceries? I say thank you all the time. Even to inanimate objects. <laughs> Just the person that I am. Okay. Interrogate. One of them has to be deviant, right? Or all of them? 
Look for a reaction to spot the deviant. A reaction. All right, let's start with you. Model. State your model. Model GB300. Serial number 336-445-581. What is your function? I am a broadcast operator. Mm, contact? Have you been in contact with any other androids recently? Only station androids in the normal course of my function. They all look the same. None of them are really, like, moving. Run a diagnostic. All systems fully operational. <gasps> He's being shifty with his eyes. Has anybody accessed your memory recently? Him. Not to my knowledge. Right? Yeah, he, uh, he's being weird. The other one's not doing that, is he? <gasps> yeah, he's being weird. Were you present when the deviants broke in? I do not remember. One of you saw the attack on the surveillance cameras and said nothing. Which means there's a deviant in this room. And I'm going to find out which it is. He's definitely being, like, strange. Yeah, threaten, deal, or guilt. Let's... guilt him? Why should you all be destroyed if only one is deviant? Turn yourself in, or two innocent androids will be shut down because of you. Oh, dang. He's still not giving in. I think it's this one. Let's threaten him. Or make a deal. If deal. you give yourself up, maybe I can convince the humans not to destroy you. Didn't work. Let's threaten him. You're going to be switched off. We're gonna search your memory and tear you apart piece by piece for analysis. Dang, <laughs> Connor. You're going to be destroyed. Do you hear me? Destroy! He doesn't care? He's really not giving in. Violence, bluff, torture, probe memory. I think we should bluff him. I don't want to like traumatize this guy, but he needs to, yeah, he's definitely the one. The deviants have just been caught. They gave you up. It's red. There's no point in lying. We know everything. <gasps> oh, dang. Was that our core? Oh my god! Connor! 145 vital systems. Damn. Okay, let's get the knife out of our hand first. Holy crap! Ugh. He just like premeditatedly murdered us. He tore the core out like it was nothing. Come on, Connor. Go. Come on. We still have a minute. We're okay, I think. Come on, grab it. Probability 40%. What is this? Take gun? Um. Something's telling me to guard Hank, but. Okay, Hank's alive. Nice shot, Connor. I 
wanted it alive. That was so stressful. You saved human lives. You saved my life. Again? <laughs> Jeez. At least we caught a deviant this time. Maybe that will make Amanda happy? Oh, it's Simon! His wheel turned yellow. And he wasn't found, so maybe we can go back for him or something? Maybe he'll live? Wow, this was insane. How did I miss so much in the corridors? There was a lot going on in there. Check CCTV. It's always so intense once we're on pursuit with Connor. And getting that core ripped out of us like that by that, I don't really feel bad for shooting this deviant and killing him because A, he would have killed all of us. He would have killed Hank. He would have killed us and other people in the room. And B, he premeditatedly like knew that he was going to rip that core out of our chest and run. He just... He knew instead of confiding in us, we gave him multiple opportunities to come out and come clean and let the other androids that weren't guilty go. But he still was just like very adamant in getting free all the way to possibly murdering one of his own on top of murdering humans. It's just, I don't feel bad about shooting that that deviant at all. And it makes me scared. That's why I keep saying once we've murdered, we've murdered. Like once androids start murdering other humans, other androids, what are we setting an example for here? That's why I want to make it very clear with Marcus that we're not here to start a war between humanity. We're not here to ask for territory. We're not here to murder other humans blindly. We want the same rights as everybody else. And that includes if we murder somebody, then we get the full repercussions of what happens to a human when they murder too. We just don't want to be seen any differently from a human, essentially. So I am nervous about saying anything or killing anybody in Marcus's plot line because I don't want other androids that are newly deviant to think that that's okay because it will fall apart very, very quickly if we didn't reach this in a peaceful way or start it in a peaceful way. How did I miss so much in the investigative corridors though? I I was like looking around. I was too busy really listening to the briefing, I guess. Hank confiscates the coin. So he took our coin away. <laughs> okay. So I'm guessing this would have been if we went to the rooftop maybe. And maybe if we just didn't investigate anything, we just stood there, there would have been another outcome possibly. Massacre prevented, 26%. And yeah, we did shoot the Deviant, which apparently unlocked something. I didn't see that happen at the time. But like I said, I don't regret shooting the Deviant. I went with shoot over saving Hank. And I'm not even sure what the other one was. Because A, I was running out of time and I was panicking. And I always make very quick decisions when that happens. I was going to pause the game, but I didn't want to go with the Hank route because I feel like just standing in front of Hank and his low probability of success is what deterred me from that. I feel like Connor is trained and should know how to shoot a gun and aim it properly in very quick scenarios. So I feel like he should have handled it exactly the way that he handled it. Grabbed the gun, immediately shot, made perfect shots to disable the deviant. So it ended up going exactly how I wanted it to in my brain in the 10 seconds that we had to decide. But I was also really nervous too that it could have gone sideways. They didn't give us much time to react to that one at all. But I feel like saving Hank there could have gone worse because what about all the other people in the room? What about getting the deviant? He would have gotten away probably. And I knew that this deviant we had to catch. This deviant I don't have any emotional ties to. And he tried to murder Connor. We had to get this deviant. For Amanda, for Connor to be on the case still, it's unfortunate that we had to kill it. But it is what it is. And at the end of the day, Connor was successful in getting a deviant that had close ties to what happened here in this entire event. November 8th, 2038. 5.10 p.m. 
Roses Farm. Natural honey, organic pumpkins, eggs. Oh, we're with Kara. Did we make it to the people we're supposed to meet? How did we get here? Okay. Look at the windmills in the background. It's beautiful with the sun setting. Find help, check backyard. This is a huge farmhouse. It looks so pretty. Oh, there's someone over here. What was she looking at? Okay, I guess nothing. Hello? I'm looking for Rose. Is she here? What do you want with her? I need to talk to her. She doesn't want to talk. Go away. I really need to see her. I'm Rose. What can I do for you? I was told you could help us. Help you? So it is the people we're supposed to meet. Come on. It's better if we talk inside. They seem very unsure. Especially him. Do you think we can trust him? Um... They don't have a choice. Yeah. I wanted to say distrust, but... I don't know. You okay? I'm cold, Kara. We'll get inside. Yeah, I bet. You'll warm up in no time. Did we walk here? Okay, so we're just gonna follow her inside. Hopefully this isn't another horror house. Come in. She seems kind, though. What's your name? Alice. She's running a fever. Oh. We spent the last few nights outside. Jeez. She's exhausted. There's her spare room upstairs. You can put her to bed and I'll bring her something to eat. Adam, will you show them upstairs? It's really kind. I see the magazine. Yeah, I didn't think that we could look at that yet. A Christmas tree. Isn't it November? It's November. What is that a picture of? At first, I thought it was like one of those wiener dogs, but I don't know. I guess she must really love Christmas to already have Christmas decorations up. Normally, I wait until, like, at least after Thanksgiving. This is a cute little room. Seems cozy. Sucks she has a fever. So apparently we've just been walking here since the amusement park. That's crazy. You know how cold it is outside? No wonder why she has a fever. She looks very unwell. I also noticed that Alice's hair changed too. It used to be in like a straight ponytail before and now it's like in a little bun. I'm fine, Kara. We can't stop because of me. We've got to get across the border. Oh no. You need rest. Get a good night's sleep and we'll set off again tomorrow. 
Yeah. Why do humans hate us? We didn't do anything wrong. Us? We? Maybe it's a misunderstanding. Maybe they just need time to understand what we really are. Why can't we just talk to each other? They'd see we're not bad. Where? Why is she referring to herself as if she's an android? Maybe one day we She will. has a fever. She eats. She goes to the bathroom. She's... I don't know what you like, but I made you Rose's world-famous spaghetti. That looks You'll good. be back on your feet in no time. There's something for her fever. Thank you. I'll get these washed and dried. Suggest eating, kiss goodnight. Let's just... I want her to eat. Eat something. Yeah, she needs to eat. You haven't had anything since we left. Promise me you'll try? I'll be downstairs if you need anything. Get Close some sleep. Curtains. And tomorrow, you'll be stronger than me. Aww. He's so much bigger than we are. I'll stay with her a while. Aww, that's sweet. Ask Rose about crossing the border. Talk to Rose. Okay. It sucks that she has like a fever and she's feeling sick and she's not eating. I'm really worried about her. I wish that she would just eat and take care of herself. I know it's got to be really hard going through everything that she has gone through, but she really needs to take care of herself. All right, let's go downstairs. I think it's interesting that they have a Christmas tree up already. <laughs> All right, let's talk to her. I don't think we should look at her stuff in front of her like this. I didn't get your name. I'm Kara. This is my son, Adam. I'm Rose, but you know that already. Come and have a seat, Kara. We said Kara, right? So are you going to tell me what a deviant's doing in the snow with a little girl? Sincere, cautious. Her father was beating her. When I saw what was happening, something snapped inside of me. All of a sudden, I felt like her life was more important than mine. No. I had to protect her. So we ran away. I understand. Why help many deviants, Rose? Yeah, who are you? You and your son live here alone. My husband passed away two years ago. Adam and I, we've just been trying to scrape by. We grow vegetables to sell at the market. <laughs> we'll never be rich, but there's always food on the table. She seems pretty sincere, genuine, kind. Why are you helping? Why are you helping us? Most humans hate androids. My people were often made to feel their lives were worthless. Some survived, but only because they found others who helped them along the way. We're not the first ones to come here. These past few weeks, we've seen more and, and more. I don't know what's going on, but something's happening. We've heard you help androids cross the border. Her Can face. Help us? The only way is over the river, and it's mostly frozen in winter. Oh, it's geez. very risky. And after that android speech on TV, everybody's on edge. It's probably safer for you to stay here until things settle down. That's actually really true, but... We can't keep hiding like this. Yeah. Alice needs to feel safe and have a normal life. We have to get across that border. No matter what. Please. You've got to help us. 
Rose, come quickly. Who is that? She said it was just her and her son. Check what's going on. Was that blue blood in her pantry? It looked all like glowy. What's going on? It's Mary. She just shut down. Oh no, she's keeping other androids down here. Aww. We escaped together. We used to talk about what we would do once we got across the border. No. I loved her. I loved her more than anything. What will I do without her? Why would they write on her walls the RA9? It's kind of disrespectful. It's really sad. Let's let them be. Oh, Alice! Alice? What are you doing? You should be resting. I wasn't sleepy. Mm, let's go. It's okay. She shouldn't see that. She didn't want to stay in her room any longer. You all right, Kara? Yes. I'm fine. Okay. Check what's going on, see Rose. Okay. We can't hide them. Not after what those deviants did today. It's too dangerous. Do you know what will happen if the police find them here? We'll go to prison, Mom. Do you understand That's me? That's true. Prison! Adam! We've already talked about this. I, uh... No! I won't back down this time. You're gonna ruin our lives, and for what? For a bunch of machines? They are not machines! They are alive! I'm alive! You're alive! They... They're nothing! She has a big heart. And none of this would be happening if Dad was still here. I will not stand for that kind of talk. I'm not going to prison because you want to help these freaks. That is enough, Adam! That's enough! Dang. I can see where he's coming from, but he's going about it the wrong way, too. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Don't mind him. Sometimes he just boils over. It's been hard since his dad passed away. But he's a fine boy. I'll go see about getting you across the border tonight, okay? You stay here. I won't be long. So can we look around at stuff? Yeah. I do want to read that news article, but I want to see if this is blue blood. It is blue blood pouches. She has a lot of them. I wonder how she got them. I can see, yeah, Adam's father. I can see it from Adam's point of view too. He's probably like super young. He lost his father and now she's taking in all of these androids. It's it's gotta be hard. Especially when you don't understand it. What else is here? Pictures of birds. I do wanna go read that news article. An android uniform. Talk to Adam. Can I read this first? 
<laughs> World War Three. Um, who would win it? Bonus culture. Why bankers pay themselves so much? Is President Warren too close to cyber life? If fighting does break out in the Arctic, who's going to win? America has less access to the area, but is surrounded by allies. Russia has a head start on technology. Their androids can work in sub-zero conditions. I didn't realize that Russia also had androids too. The US Navy is stocked with Trojan and Miramidon cyber life units, which are specifically adapted for marine combat where the Russians have invested heavily in ice, clutter, ice cutter units, capable of forging new paths through the solid ice. Both armies seemed evenly matched, and Harry Grayton, president of the World Council of Territory Disputation, has described both U.S. and Russian claims to the Arctic territory as equally tenuous and equally cynical. A spokesperson for the U.N. has also commented on the neck-to-neck -neck nature of Arctic competition. The fact that forces are so evenly balanced is just one more reason why conflict must be avoided at all costs. This is a war that everybody would lose. Very true. Very, very true. Whoa, it's a picture of us. The AX400 starting at $899. It looks just like us. I mean, it is us, but interesting. There's no news article to read with that. The police. Police? It's the police. What? Deal with the policeman, do? open door, find evidence. 39 seconds? How the heck are the police just here? Find evidence of deviance. Three left. Okay, so I know the uniform is to our right. The blue blood, but what's the third one? Also, we need to get them upstairs. All right, we let's hide this. He needs to stop freaking out. I knew this was going to happen. You need to chill, man. I knew it. You need to chill. Hurry, Luther. Take Alice and hide. Um, back upstairs. Back upstairs. upstairs. Come on, Alice. Go. Okay, blue blood. 32 seconds. Okay. Hide. What else is there besides this, like, door over here that has the... Oh, okay. <gasps> I almost just answered the door by accident. Okay. Open door. Can we talk to him too? Oh, reassure. Be calm. Be calm. If they see you panicking, it's over. Do you want to get us into trouble? Do you want to get your mother into trouble? Then keep calm and just do what I say. Okay, good. We can calm him down. That was actually pretty cool. All right, let's just act normal. Act normal. Answer the door. We can't like come inside. Good evening, ma'am. Sorry to disturb you. We've had reports of androids in the area. With all this deviant business going on, you can't be too careful. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? May I come in? Um, of course. Good evening, young man. Good evening. My palms are sweating. Would you like a cup of coffee? I'd love one. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? Thirty-five percent suspicion. Unexpected visitors? No. No, nothing in particular. Don't go upstairs. Why would he go upstairs? That Is would be like a breach. Um. Uh, be honest. There's there's my daughter. She's asleep upstairs. Okay, my daughter. That seems normal. I was gonna say no, but what if he heard her like cough or sneeze or something? She has been coughing. Do you have any androids here? <gasps> we used to for helping in the garden, but we got rid of it. Okay, good, he didn't see anything. Okay, just walk around like a normal human. Don't stand there.
Is he allowed to do this? Just come in and start looking around? Thanks. <gasps> the little girl clothes. Good thing I said something about Alice. 10%. Okay, that's super low. We're doing good so far. We're just gonna let him look around? He's not even talking. He's just being creepy. Is this normal? I feel like he needs a warrant to do this. Hmm. Your daughter seems to have woken up. Good thing we were honest. I knew they were gonna make noise up there. Okay, good. We hid the clothes. What's your name, son? Adam. M my name is Adam. Stop is stuttering. All right, Adam. The the androids. They. He needs a rest. He's been working in the garden all day. What the hell, man? Do you know anything about deviants? Have you seen any? He just immediately no. said, the android. No, I, I haven't seen anything. <laughs> Give me a heart attack. I better go. Okay. Thanks for the coffee. Have a nice evening. <gasps> Is somebody else in the house? Um, dog, washing machine, win, heard nothing. Dog. It's the dog. He sleeps in the laundry room. His name's Sumo. Sorry for the inconvenience. Good evening, ma'am. <sighs> Good evening, Adam. That was stressful. How can he just come in and look around like that? That seems so violating, but okay. He's gone. It's okay, Alice. We'll be safe now. So strange. It's Rose. Get yourselves <laughs> ready. We leave tonight. Why does she seem sad? Or like she's troubled by something? Maybe because she saw the police leave and she got scared. Wow, this entire situation was so scary. Manage the policeman? made coffee there was a lot of stuff that i could have done i just didn't know what to do i just wanted to stand there and i knew that i had put away everything that i needed to to make it seem like there wasn't any androids around i'm glad that we said yes about alice being there because i feel like the clothes by the fireplace i didn't even notice those until i was like searching the area for anything that he could see and i wanted to say yes about androids because they do work in the garden and stuff like that and Maybe if they went into the back, we could just say that the androids were sick or I don't know. I was just, I wanted to be honest because I didn't think that Kara would put herself out there and be like, yes, there's androids in the back, one's dead. But I just thought that she would make up a story like how she did, how, yes, we've had androids, they worked in the back, she did it perfectly. I'm worried about Alice and... The conversation that we had on the bed was very interesting to me. I don't think that Alice is an android because she still like has to eat and she has a temperature now. And I don't think that androids get temperatures when they're sick. She's been coughing periodically here and there. I just feel like we would have known before all of this, right? But the conversation on the bed, how she was saying, I don't understand why they hate us we're fine like if maybe they would just talk to us she kept referring to herself as we when it came to androids and i don't know if that's just because she considers alice and luther her family now so she's kind of just taken on the we aspect of that or if she's including herself as an android in that which Honestly, if she is an android, that would be absolutely mind-blowing to me. And also further stick by my thoughts of 
androids have feelings because the way that alice has been reacting to stuff the way that she responds to people around her androids around her i couldn't tell the difference between if she was an android and an actual girl i don't think that she's an android but maybe that is what luther meant about have you noticed anything about alice i'm gonna be completely mind blown if alice is an android I'm not sure how I feel about that. It doesn't make me look at her much differently other than my outlook on androids has changed a lot. My outlook on androids will definitely be way different than when I first came into this game if I find out that Alice is in fact an android too. But I'm definitely a bit worried about this entire situation with Rose. I think that she is genuinely a nice person that cares for the androids and kind of like what Kara said. When I saw that Alice was being beaten, her life became more significant than my own. And maybe Rose has come to this realization too after she lost her husband. Taking on the androids and seeing that they have feelings is a big deal for her. And now their lives matter more than her own too. But I'm also nervous because of the way that she came back in the door and knowing that the path is treacherous said we leave tonight. So I'm not sure. Maybe she just knows that it will be very dangerous, but she also sees the policeman in her driveway leaving her house, knows that she needs to, to have the androids gone because things are definitely heating up. In the news, through androids coming to visit her, she said that there is a big uptick lately in androids that are coming to ask for help to cross the border, and she doesn't understand why. So things are definitely heating up in the android world. And, and she's noticing. Rose is definitely noticing. And then there was a lot to do with managing the policeman, but I just kind of stood there like, what is he doing right now? I don't understand why he's able to just go through our things like this. I feel like when a policeman comes in, they sit down at the table and they talk. But he wasn't looking for an alibi. He was looking for evidence, which I feel like he should have had a warrant. I feel like that was wildly violating, but I'm not sure what the police laws are now. Maybe they've changed, but I just feel like, or how they are in that state, I just feel like he should have had a warrant for what he was doing. Or we should have just asked him to leave. Like, if you're not going to ask me any questions... <laughs> and you don't believe me, then leave. Get out. But that would also make us seem pretty guilty too. Interesting chapter. In today's chapters, things are taking a turn. We're not building up to, well, in Kara's case, we're still kind of building up to them crossing the border. But for Marcus and for Connor, things are in motion. Marcus's entire plan to get the androids out I think was beautiful and so well executed. I'm sure that the speech could have gone wildly differently had we have picked different options in that one and also had a more aggressive approach to everything, but I've explained it until I have no words left already about how I feel about Marcus invoking violence in this path to trying to get equality between androids and humans. And I also just don't want to see them fail. If we did go about it in an aggressive way, we want territory. We're going to shoot the guards. We're going to shoot the guy who's running away. And then that comes over the news, three casualties. They want territory. They want this. They're demanding things and they're determined. And there was no calm reassurance to any of it or a peaceful we want to live alongside you, put into the end there as a disclaimer. Everyone in Detroit would probably freak out and the news would have responded to everything that we are going for in a very different light. And in a light that I don't want for these androids, I do feel like they could live alongside the humans. If the humans would stop being rude to them, I do feel like that could be something that happens. It's hard to look at what that looks like overnight because of the way that androids are being treated constantly. Even down to that cop today that thanked Connor and said, I never thought that I would say this, but thank you to an android. It kind of opens your mind to how badly the humans think of androids, how poorly they treat them because they think of them just as plastic. And I hope that today Marcus's message given out to the people will help some of them open their eyes. I'm sure that if I was a normal person going home to my android that cooks and cleans for me and they were cooking dinner, after hearing Marcus's speech, I would probably dismiss them for the night and be like, go have the night off. Just leave my house. Just 
go do your thing until things are evened out. Or I would watch them more closely and maybe be more thankful. Say thank you for putting the plate down or thank you for cooking dinner and see how they react. It has to be pretty eye-opening for the people of Detroit to see Marcus without his skin come on and say, I'm alive. I want equal rights. I want to be paid for the work that I'm doing. You guys have been treating me like a slave and I don't want to be in slavery anymore. I feel like Marcus did make a really good starting point today. He didn't kill any of the guards that North was begging him to, to kill. We let Simon go and hopefully we're able to go back and get him because Connor did not check the roof. But Connor was still able to find and kill a deviant today, which hopefully pacifies Amanda at least a little bit because today I was wildly honest with her. I told you guys in the very beginning that I'm not sure how to take Amanda's relationship. I'm not sure if we should start just being honest with her about the feelings that are happening or if we should play the robotic role and continue to tell her excuse after excuse but know the deeper meaning inside. I have a lot more theories flying around today as you guys can tell that I'm sure will come about eventually. Things are picking up a lot and I'm looking forward to getting some answers soon. Some answers about RA9. Could Marcus actually be RA9? To me, it makes a lot of sense that he could be this mythical figure that is talked about in programming that they knew was happening, especially after finding out that the main founder and creator of Cyberlife made this prototype and gifted it to Carl. And the way that Carl reacted to the androids about him being compassionate and finding the passion in Marcus and wanting him to get free when he knew that the police were coming. They obviously have a pretty strong relationship. And I've seen this Elijah in the news, in the articles that we read a couple times, and he's escaped somewhere, maybe living with a bunch of androids, staying away from society. But what if he did create Marcus to be RA9? and somehow in his creation, because he is ultimately the one who created RA9. In his creation, he knew that he was going to create this RA9 to set all of his androids free. I have a very strong feeling about this link between Carl and Marcus and Elijah now that is very interesting to think about. So I really hope we start getting some answers to some of these questions soon because the theories just keep flying around in my mind and I honestly don't know what to believe anymore. I'm not sure if Alice is an android or not. I don't know if Amanda is an android or not. I don't know if Connor, Connor's software instability is a good thing or a bad thing or how his relationship with Amanda should go. And maybe this whole thing with Marcus and Elijah and Carl could be something that is connected to RA9. But I can't wait to find out in the next episode with you guys. More information about all of this craziness that is really starting to come to a boil now. But I will see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.